In this video, we're turning this basic Ender 3 3D printer here into this. Hey and welcome to the channel. My name's Austin. I do full-time engineering design and 3D printing. And today we're going over all my favorite upgrades for the Ender 3 3D printer. Now these work for the Ender 3 as well as the Ender 3 Pro. So whatever model you have, we are all set to go. Now, most of the upgrades that I will be going over today are very functional, meaning that they will either improve print quality, reduce fire hazard or improve organization. However, I will admit that one or two of them are totally just for show. I did get a little bit carried away as you can probably tell from the color scheme of the printer, but you know what? That's what happens when you have a machine that can print accessories for itself. Now, also at the very end of this video, I'm actually going to be giving away the Ender 3 3D printer. So make sure that you do watch till the end because one of you guys are definitely getting that. So let's just jump right into it and start off light. The very first upgrade that I wanna talk about is the Z-axis screw. Now I contemplated the functionality of the screw for a while as you can just lift the entire X-axis in the Z-axis direction. However, after printing this one and actually using it, I have to admit that the functionality of it is superb and I definitely recommend just getting this as one of your first prints. I wish that I printed a bunch of these for my very first Ender print farm a long time ago. Now you will realize that I am printing these prints on the Prusa or the Raze 2 and you might be thinking, well, why aren't you just printing them on the Ender? And honestly, that's just because I am giving this machine away here, like I said. So whoever gets it, I do want you to get a brand new machine, but all of these prints can absolutely be done on the Ender. Ender 3 itself. I personally started with an Ender 3 exclusive print farm years and years ago, and I still have a couple of those printers sitting around the shop today. Like literally years later, they still work and I still do use them. That's it for that. Let's get back into the next one. Now, the next upgrade that I recommend is this spool holder right here. Now, the standard spool holder that comes with the Ender 3 is fine. However, this is a huge and extremely functional upgrade. Basically, the less friction that we can create going from the spool itself at the top of the printer all the way down to the nozzle of the printer, the less friction will greatly reduce the potential for nozzle jams, clogs, filament snaps, etc. So I do highly recommend printing this spool holder as it might just be that thing that saves you from a failed print something like 60 hours in. And yes, I do have those too. Now the spool holder does come uh, with a couple of pieces and you'll notice that it also uses bearings. See, there's really only two standard pieces of hardware that most people incorporate into basic 3D designs. Number one is bearings and number two is screws and nuts. And I will put a link to the ones that I recommend below and they are definitely the most common ones that should work with most designs. But I do recommend picking those up earlier rather than later as you'll find it really opens up the potential to use online designs that are already available to you. Basically the community community of designers loves using bearings and screws because they're cheap and extremely functional. I use them all the time in my designs. For example, instead of printing a really large object or something that requires a ton of supports, what we can do is we can just split that model in half and use a screw and an embedded nut. And in case you don't want to use bearings for your spool holder, I will indeed link another one that I recommend below that uses no bearings. Okay, next up, let's talk about fans. The cooling fans of your machine are basically just as important as any other component because without proper cooling, your electronics can overheat. Also, your prints will not print well without significant cooling from the extruder fan. So for this set of upgrades, we have three new fans or fan covers, the first of which is really important. And again, this one here is a must print. That is the electronics fan cover that's located by the SD card reader. I can pretty much guarantee that small plastic pieces will indeed get into this fan and actually jam that fan up if you don't put this cover on. It's a super fast and easy and functional print. Just make sure to get it on there. I even added direction arrows to raise or lower the print bed. Uh, you can also just print the actual fan with those on it, but yeah, I mean, look, if you know, you know sometimes when you're turning the knobs to raise or lower the uh, level of the print bed, sometimes you just get a little bit confused. Nonetheless, the next fan cover is for the electronics box at the back of the printer. This one, Honestly, I'm not sure about. I, I actually don't really think it does much, but it did give me an excuse to use some fancy orange pastel colored filament, so I did print it anyways. It is supposed to reduce the fan noise. Um, maybe, maybe not, but nonetheless, it does look good and it will prevent anything from getting in there. So that's my honest opinion of that one. Now, the next fan upgrade is actually an attachment for the extruder fan. These are pretty common and they're just meant to improve the airflow around the nozzle of the printer. Honestly, this one's kind of a no brainer. You should definitely just print it and try it over 
boat for yourself, especially if you're someone who likes to print fast or with unsupported overhangs, the airflow around the nozzle of the printer is extremely important. And the additional distribution of that airflow will definitely improve the quality of your prints. Now with this fan being so close to the nozzle, if you do have PETG, I do recommend printing this in PETG just because it will be subject to some heat. Now let's talk about the chain. This is probably one of the most common prints for the Ender 3. And what we're doing is we're printing what's essentially called a drag chain. These chains are used uh, all the time in other manufacturing equipment like CNC's, laser cutters, and things like that. And for a really good reason, because the last thing that we ever want to happen during a print is for the wiring of our printer to become damaged, because obviously that would be uh, amongst many dangerous things, it would be a fire hazard. So honestly, with this one, I printed two different variations of the drag chain. I printed the first one in all red, and then I printed another in black and yellow. My honest opinion is that none of them are actually perfect from the ones that you'll see on Thingiverse. And you can see that from people's comments uh, on those actual files. I will give this one a try and I'll put it on another machine and see how it does over time. But it is worth noting to you that I did have an Ender 3 here running for years and years without a drag chain and I've never had any issues, but I do keep a close eye on my machines and make sure that the maintenance is up to date, but it is better to be safe than sorry. So if you wanna print one of these chains, uh, I definitely recommend trying it out for yourself. I will note that another option is to actually just buy one of these chains. Basically, the geometry of the chain is not ideal for 3D printing, although yes, you can 3D print it, if 3D printing that chain actually improves the chances of a piece of that chain falling on your bed during the print, then maybe it's not actually worth it. But hey, maybe it is just me and maybe you did print a successful chain and that it's working well for you. If so, please do let me know, drop a comment below and yeah, let's test out the one that you're using because I didn't have too, too much luck with the two that I have. But like I said, I'm gonna leave it on there and I am gonna test it. So let's go ahead and let's just move into the next upgrades. However, before we go into the next upgrades, I did just finish a couple pieces from a giant Tesla charger that I'm printing for the next video. It's like 300 to 400 hours total of printing. So if you do want to see that video, make sure that you do hit the subscribe button because that is definitely going to be one of my favorite videos. It's going to be awesome. So that again, that's coming up next week. So just hit the subscribe button if you do want to see that one. The next upgrade that I always add to these machines is a glass print bed. Depending where you got your ender from and what model it is, it may or may not have already come with a glass print bed. But honestly, a glass print bed is just a staple upgrade and it will instantly make your life easier. They're extremely durable and they're a lot easier to remove the print prints from. If you use just a little bit of adhesive and then after your print is done, you let that part cool, it will often actually just pop off from the glass print bed. So there's no uh, scraping or trying to pry things off the build plate. I'll link the one below that I recommend, but I can pretty much guarantee uh, if you use your printer enough or you use it lots, you will have to change the bed at some point. And when you do, I recommend changing it for a glass print bed. Now, the last thing that I will note about adding in that glass print bed is that with that not being attached to the actual build plate, it makes a lot easier because when your print is done, you can also just pull the entire glass sheet off of the build platform that's on your printer. So therefore you're not going to be messing around with the leveling of your bed. That's all I'm going to say on that glass print bed. Highly recommend it. Pretty much a must upgrade. Whenever I order a machine, I always order a glass print bed with it. So next up, let's go ahead, let's jump in and let's do two uh, just aesthetic upgrades. So number one is the cover for the back of the LCD screen. I printed it in this nice yellow and I think that it looks super awesome. It is not super functional, but it is kind of nice not to have an exposed PCB board on the back of the LCD. So it definitely does clean that up a little bit, but nonetheless, uh, in terms of function, it really honestly doesn't do much. And neither does the next one that I printed in purple, and that is the X-axis motor cover. Creality went ahead and stuck their QR code on the front facing uh, motor there, but that's nice, but no thanks. Let's go ahead and let's cover that one up. The next upgrades are slot covers. Now these are probably one of, if not my favorite upgrades, because honestly, they just keep all of the dust dirt and debris out of the rails. Whenever you remove prints, supports, or you have failed prints, etc., etc., you all know that those little tiny plastic pieces do accumulate in those slots and they're next to impossible to get out even with a vacuum. So finally, this will solve that problem. And this is a really nice design. Shout out to uh, XIMES on Thingiverse. Again, link below. Now I printed these in a nice metallic copper looking filament on the Raze Pro 2. And right now it has a textured print bed on it. So the top surface finish of those looks pretty cool. Uh, I'll include some close-ups of those. But nonetheless, uh, I will note that you can indeed download and print 
want these inserts for pretty much all of the slots on the printer, but I think the only ones that you actually need are the ones for below the print bed where the plastic actually falls into. You can also just print out a bunch of them and cut them to any size you want and put them like all around your printer if you just wanted to add a bunch of color to your printer. Let's keep going. Moving on the four knobs that you use to level the bed. They're a little bit small and they're not always easy to grab. If you've ever had any frustrations leveling your bed, which I can pretty much guarantee you have if this is your first printer, I did go ahead and print four larger ones of those in white PLA. And then just to go with it, another kind of just aesthetic based print was an LCD dial that's basically the same LCD dial that the Prusa uses with those three fan-like extrusions. I guess it's supposed to improve some tactility. And if you wanna spin it really, really fast and that's your thing, I guess you can do that too. Now, while we're adding in those four knobs, I also added in this little red handle to the print bed because basically what happens is the less that we have to actually touch the print bed, the less likely it is to become unleveled uh, or unlevel. I don't know if unleveled is a word, but nonetheless, as I mentioned earlier, the two standard design components are those bearings and those nuts and those screws for the four print bed knobs. We will be using four M4 nuts to keep them in place. And just for some extra stability, I always do put a dab of super glue on the embedded nuts. Now, when it comes to bed leveling, pretty much everyone has issues with this at first. And then people always just say, oh, go get a BL touch, which is basically just a pro base sensor. To be honest with you, completely honest, I think they're absolutely pointless. Adding complexity to a very simple machine that already performs extremely well, in my opinion, is not a great idea. If you're having issues leveling the bed, you do not need to go spend money on a BL Touch leveling sensor. It honestly, honestly just takes a little bit of extra practice. After you do it a bunch of times, I promise you, you'll be able to level the bed perfectly within like 10 or maybe 20 seconds, especially if you're using a glass print bed. Like I said, with a glass print bed, you can actually just take the glass off and put it back so your bed level should not actually really change very much and therefore you shouldn't actually need to adjust it very often. I will link the BL Touch below, but honestly, I don't recommend it. Now, if the print bed on the ender was maybe four or five times the size that it currently is, then yes, it would probably make sense to use a probe-like sensor like the BL Touch. Um, personally, I've had a couple printers with probe sensors and on every single one of them, I just wish it was a manual bed because the probes, honestly, they often just make things more difficult. But again, that's just my rant and that's just my opinion. Let's just go into the next one. So the next upgrade is my absolute favorite and that is this green drawer here. This is my favorite filament of all time. It's called EcoTuff PLA 2.0. Uh, these come in really, really nice pastel light colors. I'll link them below too. It's a little bit expensive, but it is by far the best PLA that I've ever found. And it has things like uh, higher UV resistance and higher transition temperatures. So it is suitable for outdoor use like PETG, for example, yet it still prints like PLA. I really like it. Uh, anyways, back to the drawer. The functionality of this drawer is phenomenal. We're always messing around looking for uh, Allen keys, wrenches, adhesive, bed clamps, etc. cetera, uh, you name it. But literally you can just put it all in this drawer. And now your 3D printer also holds your tools. If you're like me and you're commonly misplacing things, well, this will save you a ton of time. And the design of this is also great because it just slides into the slots of the Y axis. So whoever designed this, really, really nice design. However, for this one, you do need to check if you have the Ender 3 Pro or just the Ender 3, as there is different drawer models for the different printers. Again, it's all linked below to avoid any confusion. And on that note, I should mention that personally, I don't think that the Ender 3 Pro is worth a bit of extra money. I have a few machines of each version and honestly, the print quality that comes off of them is the exact same. So whatever model you have, uh, you should be totally happy with it. Trust me, there's not really a big difference. Occasionally there are these really crazy flash sales where you can actually pick up an Ender 3 Pro for super, super cheap. And I do usually try and let the viewers of this channel know whenever those are on sale, I usually at least buy one or two of them. But nonetheless, let's just keep moving on. So now we have two more filament guides coming up. As I mentioned earlier, the less friction between the spool of filament and the actual nozzle of our printer, the better. So here we have a simple filament guide that attaches directly to the X axis, the top X axis extrusion rail of our printer. And this one right here, we're gonna use in combination with the bearing filament roller. Again, all of these are gonna be linked below, but this is a super nice clean setup that should really help prevent failed prints. The reason for that top filament guide is really just to keep the filament out of the way and to improve the angle uh, that that filament is actually entering into the extruder motor assembly. In addition to those, we can add an upgraded Bowden tube. I'll link this one below. I do recommend this upgrade. This is kind of one of the higher up upgrades 
upgrades that I will recommend because even just having one of these around as a spare can save you in the event that you get a clog at the nozzle end of your Bowden tube, which can and does happen. In fact, if you have a clog and you can't figure it out, check your Bowden tube because it is possible that some heat creep got up there and some of your filament is indeed melted in the top of your Bowden tube. So now at this point with just a couple of those simple upgrades, we can see that the pathway from our spool all the way down to that nozzle could not really get any smoother. It's looking really good. And so let's just keep going. Okay, three upgrades left and maybe even the top three, the first of which is the tool holder. Now, yes, we do already have that nice green drawer, which is probably still my favorite, but that green drawer does not hold the spatula. And we all know that spatula goes missing a little bit too often. I printed this one here on the Raise Pro 2 from some Prusa Mint PETG in the classic Prusa Orange. By having this tool holder, we can actually move things like those bearings and other accessories into that green drawer to better organize the ender for our specific ender tools. Now, again, our 3D printer is now doubling as a toolbox and we have an all-in-one workstation, essentially. Something about that is just super satisfying that you can pick up your whole ender and all of the tools are already there with it. Let's go ahead, let's keep going. The next upgrade is for lights. Yes, we're gonna add some LED lights around our printer. Specifically, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some lights from the top down. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna run the LED light strip down the back of the printer as well. And yeah, this is just a nice little touch to light up not only the print bed, but also the area around the printer. And this will also help provide some light for our next upgrade, which we'll be talking about in a second. Now, because I added that filament guide on the left and the tool holder on the right of that top um, X axis, the light row file from Thingiverse doesn't quite fit all the way across that x-axis as it should so what I did is I simply ran just one row of the LEDs as you can see in that nice pastel pink color again I'll link those below I love those filaments but what I did is I took that LED strip and then ran it around the back end of the printer and I might make a nice little 3d uh, printed cover to cover the little bit of the LED strip that you can see but nonetheless I think these lights look great and you can control them with a the remote you can control the brightness the colors etc so this just is a phenomenal Phenomenal final touch. Okay, in our final upgrade, before we do the giveaway, this upgrade is not something we can print, but it is absolutely something that will make your life easier and help keep things organized and efficient. That is called a Raspberry Pi. Now, by using a Raspberry Pi and OctoPrint, we can monitor and control our printer wirelessly. And therefore, in addition to not having to mess with SD cards, we can also hook up a camera to monitor our ongoing prints. Or if you're like me and you like to capture those time-lapse videos, and we can even hook up a nice DSL to get some nice clean videos. Now, if you 3D print as a hobby, maybe only one or two things a week, then it might not be worth this upgrade for you. But if you do plan on doing something like selling your prints or you're printing often, then this is definitely one of the ones that's worth getting. Most people go ahead and they print a nice case and attach the actual Raspberry Pi itself to the printer, but I actually leave mine off the printer because I like to use my external DSLR camera and that thing I'm always moving it around to get different angles and try and capture cool videos. Additionally, one Raspberry Pi can be connected to more than one printer. So I've had it connected to up to three and therefore I don't like it just uh, physically attached to one of them. But that is it for all of our upgrades. If you incorporate all of those or even some of those, it should either improve your print quality, uh, make your life easier from an organizational standpoint, uh, or at least just make your printer look a lot better. Now let's go ahead and let's do the giveaway. So first off, thank you guys for watching and supporting the channel. The more people that we get behind this channel, the more giveaways and the better content that I can do. So I am super super excited with the traction so far. And as you know, I posted this contest form about maybe one month ago and it has had 143 responses, which is pretty crazy. And I do think it's awesome. Now, if you don't win this one, don't worry because I do actually have another Ender 3 sitting over there and I plan on doing something similar with it. So stay tuned for that. However, here's how I'm gonna pick the winner for this one. I have an Excel sheet here with all 143 names on it. I'm just gonna put the numbers one to 143 in a box. And then what I'm gonna do is pull one of the numbers and whatever name is associated with that number, that person wins the printer here. So let's go ahead and let's do that now. Okay, so I have all of the numbers here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put all the numbers in the box and then obviously all the numbers correspond to the name of an entrant. And I have the Excel sheet in front of me here that shows everyone who entered and their corresponding number. So let's just go ahead and let's pick a number and announce the winner here. So I don't know why I'm nervous, but let's see. Uh, let's see who wins it. So I have number 53 here. So let's go ahead on the Excel sheet and let's see who number 53 is. So congratulations to 
Uh, 53 is Michael V. I guess I won't say your last name, but congrats, Michael V. I will be sending you an email shortly and uh, we'll go through that. So that is it for this video. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you like it and I do appreciate you watching all the way to the end here. Remember next week's video includes a huge Tesla charger 3D print. So if you wanna see uh, what like 400 hours of printing can do, make sure you hit that subscribe button and I'll see you guys there. Uh, Michael, I will be sending you an email and then hopefully maybe just drop a comment on the video and we'll go from there. So see you guys in the next video. Thank you.